All right, everyone. I am excited for today's RD to RD live show. I am joined today by Mushumi, dietitian Mushumi. We're going to be talking about long term care consulting. And I want to kick this off by saying I was guilty of kind of having a certain mindset about long term care. Um, and as I've, you know, grown RD to RD and looking at resources for dietitians, I've noticed that a lot of the, you know, products that I promote and the ideas, whether it's on social media or just conversations in general, really complete, had a complete lack of that focus on long-term care. And I decided to explore that. What were my own biases about long-term care and what did those stem from? And perhaps there was something I, I didn't know about dietitians and the work they do in long-term care. And so this, you know, live show is really an exploration of what are the opportunities for dietitians to build not just a, you know, employment employed by a long-term care facility, but a, you know, a, a business where we do consulting, where we're really picking and choosing the work that we do and what is that like and how to shine a light on the opportunity and the skill set that you need to be successful. So Mushumi, uh, thank you for being here today and, um, I'm excited to dive into this topic. Thank you, Megan. And um, um, this is a great platform, RD2RD. So thank you for inviting me. I'm really excited um, to be here and um, to talk about uh, you know, my passion and uh, what I've been doing for the past uh, 20 plus years as a wow. consultant in long-term assistant and group homes and hospice. So yeah. Uh, Yes, thank you. So I think, you know, to kind of gauge, you know, who we have listening in, if you have any, um, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Do you currently work in long-term care? Are you looking to move into, uh, you know, more of a consulting type, you know, role where you're running your own business or is this completely, you know, new to you? So I have, um, if you have questions as we go along, feel free to, you know, type them in the comments. I'll be keeping a lookout, but I will go ahead and, you know, dive into those that, you know, I've prepared for today. So you mentioned you've been in this, you know, this area of dietetics for 20 years. So kind of tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started and the business that you run now. Okay, perfect. So hello again, everybody. Uh, my name is Moshumi and um, I am a registered dietitian. And um, let's see, so I uh, grew up in India and um, I came here with a master's degree in human nutrition from India and um, uh, got another master's from here and uh, my um, uh, and got registered as a dietitian. Um, at the same time that I was working um, at the county here, uh, for the county here in a WIC clinic uh, in Michigan. Um, so, um, uh, so I started my career working at the county and then um, as I was getting um, uh, registered to be a dietitian interim, I changed to a clinical position uh, at a local hospital here and did uh, the typical eight to five uh, job. Um, so anyways, um, life, you know, life was happening and then I was pregnant uh, with my um, firstborn uh, child and I wanted to um, find something flexible because I knew I didn't want to go like a eight to five uh, job. So um, I uh, was then looking around and, you know, uh, I am a gra graduate of Michigan State University. So I then, uh, you know, approached a couple of my professors and asked if they knew of anything flexible. And um, it so happened that uh, one of my professors, uh, you know, she called me back and she's like, Mishumi, there is this company 
that is looking for a consultant position in a long-term care um, locally here. So, uh, you know, of course, I uh, applied and um, got that position. And uh, it was for about, I'm trying to think, maybe um, in the week, I just would work like eight hours. It was very flexible. Um, and I still was working as a consultant, but for a company. I see. Um, it was like, the perfect fit for my lifestyle because it was so uh, very flexible. Uh, you know, I could pick my hours and um, I really enjoyed doing that because, you know, I could maintain my registration at the same time. It was very, uh, gave me the flexibility and um, uh, enjoyed my time there. So uh, then working in, uh, I'm trying to remember, you know, possibly a few years right. <laughs> into yeah. that a long-term facility and um, uh, that's when you know uh, as my kids were growing up I was looking into more hours and you know how I could expand this whole thing so um, uh, then the same with the same company then I had you know I took up another uh, home too anyways long story short um, just like you do with um, I think with private practice or with any, in fact, with any uh, business or any position you are um, in, you know, I think word of mouth and your experience matters a lot. So um, one of my coworkers happened to change positions and she became a director of nursing at a different uh, facility. And uh, then she approached me because they liked my quality of work. And she said, Mishumi, would you like to work as a consultant for our nursing home? And um, I said, yes, I would. And uh, that's how I actually then launched my own consulting uh, for or started my own consulting with um, long term or assisted or group home. So I think. That right there, I think, is the point where I want to ask that question of all of us, you know, if we're starting our own business, there's this giant, you know, sometimes we feel like we have to have, you know, all of these things necessarily in place. But what I hear you saying, it was that networking and that opportunity where now you have your own contract. So can you kind of dive into a little bit of the work you were doing before was kind of an employee type of situation where you were getting paid versus moving into this contract? What's the difference there? So um, before I was working as a consultant with a company okay. and the company then, so what you do is just, you know, submit your invoice and all of that to your company, whichever company that you're working under, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when I do my own consulting, starting from like the contract to the forms, to the invoice, everything is on me. So I'm really glad you brought this up, Megan. It sounds really simple to me now because, you know, it's been so many years, <laughs> but I'll be honest, I was nervous um, at that time because I did not have the resources um, I needed. Uh, like, for example, I didn't have a contract in place, right? So I did need, um, you know, uh, to talk to a lawyer, have a contract done um, uh, uh, again, because when you're working as an employee versus when you're working as a consultant, things are very different, right? Um, a consulting job or contract could, depending on you and the nursing home or the assisted living, uh, you know, it could go month to month, uh, or it, you know, some of them like to do three months, however, uh, whatever you guys kind of bargain or talk about. So that is very different from where you're an employee. So um, I actually had to figure it all out on my own. Um, but I think, um, you know, I was very excited and somewhere in my heart, um, I kind of wanted to work for myself. <laughs> um, I just, you know, I love that concept of I am the owner of my business. You know, it's, uh, I can do it at my own uh, uh, time, my own terms. And so um, then I developed all these different uh, forms. And um, unlike now, 20, 21 years back, or, you know, um, so many years back, um, not everything was online. So it was all paper, 
And so I had to develop all these uh, <laughs> paper forms. I remember uh, bring this whole bundle in and then um, talk to the administrator. And that's how um, I started my first consulting position, um, again, through the whole networking. Um, and then, uh, you know, it just kind of, um, I say it's like this balloon and it just kind of grows and grows. Um, but the there, point if you kind of, I think this whole point you made about being nervous about, you know, the first time you're going to go out and, and try to get a contract for your own business, I'm sitting here thinking about myself, I would be very intimidated. And how how did you kind of get past that and what recommendations do you have for someone who's kind of listening in and is totally saying yeah that's me maybe i have some experience or maybe those opportunities have come up but i've just kind of shied away because i'm not what if i do it wrong what if i make a you know that that's a big jump it is so this i mean this is what i would um recommend. Uh, number one, I would definitely uh, say, you know, gain that um, experience of maybe starting out as like an employee or working for a company, quote unquote, for like a couple of years. So you get a feel of what uh, long term care is about. Um, you know, uh, now when you get that offer, um, jump into it. Um, I know it sounds intimidating. It sounds like there is so much, uh, but I'll be honest with you. Like, you know, I have a bundle that um, I think, uh, you know, I was planning to put on RD to RD because I absolutely like love this medium where I'll have all the forms. So if somebody needed it, they can, you know, just all they would have to do is you know, open it up and they've got all their forms in place of what's needed. Now, I know state to state, there might be variations and contract and whatnot. But, you know, when you have that going for you, um, when you are confident in the quality of work you're producing, um, I will tell you, it can be one of the best, most rewarding jobs you would have. Um, it, I just absolutely um, love it. And I'll tell you, um, one another thing i hear a lot of people say oh long term i'm so burnt out you know there's that whole burnout thing too um now when you work as a consultant though um in long term i feel like my experience you really don't get burnt out because of the variety that is offered to you so um if i can you know if i may uh, say so so i consult with like say long-term care, which are the nursing homes. I do some assisted livings. I do group homes. Um, I have a hospice I work with um, and a, a rehab group and then my own private consulting, right? So why, why do I do this? Because I think I love variety. I just, for me, um, you know, an eight to five job where I'm doing the same thing over and over again, just, I think it's my personality, I would get burnt out. It's, this is again, just me. So I absolutely, absolutely love, um, Megan, the variety that these different homes bring to me. Um, I could be doing, uh, for one home, I might be doing just high risk. For another, for like say the assisted livings, I do their menus primarily. So there's so much variety. There's so many different age groups I'm, uh, you know, um, dealing with, so. And I think the other element that people, you know, are intimidated by is what you have to know, I think, to be successful in, you know, long-term care from a, you know, and also even maybe assisted in group homes maybe to a lesser degree, the, the regulatory elements. And when you go from working for a company to it being your own contract, that must feel a little bit different. How did you get the level of expertise? Now you said you worked for a couple of years in long-term care and that your quality, again, I can't ever stress enough that doing great work creates, you know, opportunity, you know, going forward that, did that prepare you enough or what else did you do to fill in some of those gaps and how did you handle the nerves of what if i what if i miss something what if the state comes in and this and i mess everything up i guess that's what i'm kind of throwing out there 
Um, so, uh, like you said, Megan, I think it is, um, and I think I also said this, I would, um, you know, when you are working for a consultant position, I think it's, uh, I wouldn't start out out of school as a consultant, or even if I did that, you know, I would still work under a company where I've got the directions, right? Everything's written out for me. Um, and um, for example, you know, say state walks in, I might have like a supervisor dietitian in there to help me out if there is an issue. Uh, versus if you are the consultant, um, you know, you're the one who's kind of in charge, say there's a um, sanitation violation or anything like that, then, you know, you are um, the one who is in charge there. And how do you um, get to that level? I think you get to that level with the experience, you know, working there um, uh, uh, for so many years, um, you know, you, you do feel very confident, you do know. Now, did I feel confident when I started? In all honesty, possibly not. But you know, I took the leap and I jumped in. I'm like, how difficult can this be? And sometimes I think as dietitians also, we overjudge ourselves, you know? It's like, um, if, or being too critical. So, um, uh, and every job um, uh, after that, you know, after I launched my first one was through word of mouth. It was everybody came in um, through a referral. So that again, I just want to stress, you know, our quality of work. I am not at all saying compromise because I, I have also heard that part where people start out with one home for so many hours and then maybe they're given two homes. Um, I would say, and I have said no to that. So what I mean by quality of work is to do justice to the home and you know do, uh, uh, do the best you can in terms of uh, <clears throat> time and the quality of work you're giving and it just you know, it just expands again um, I am going to say it's like one-on-one -on -one private consulting where when you have a client that really loves you they make the referral right so it's like that yeah, and I think that getting your you know foot in the door, whether it's you know private practice or otherwise, a lot of what we do is word of mouth and through our network. Um, and I think there's a lot of different ways to get to success. And I always think shining a light on you know what we hear out in the world, which is often people with you know marketing things they you know want to sell to us have a certain methodology that they want us to follow. But I think it's important to listen to lots of different voices and maybe ones that don't have, you know, a giant advertising, they're not advertising their method for success because sometimes that consistently word of mouth and opportunities through networking is just that consistent, you know, how businesses succeed is you know, network and word of mouth. So I think just pointing that out, that oftentimes we feel like we have to have this giant plan of how we're gonna market and launch our business, when in reality, sometimes, and for a lot of people, that isn't necessarily the path they took. So I think it's really great that you, you know, kind of illustrated that for us. Sure. Now, you mentioned burnout, you mentioned long hours, but you also mentioned kind of flexibility for dietitians. Now we know healthcare has certainly changed uh, a lot in the last 10 and certainly 20 years, but um, especially as we see the acuity in the hospital and more of the, you know, you know, how payments are done and readmissions, how, what are some of the changes that you see as far as in the industry and the type of work and then opportunities going forward. You mentioned group homes and assisted living. What do you see for people who maybe don't have this bird's eye view that you do of you know, this type of work? So um, the one thing that I, I am seeming or I'm seeing, uh, especially um, with group homes that I never saw so much before, um, they are actually looking in to um, hiring contracted or consultant dietitians, uh, primarily to do like their menus, because you know most places now um, want these balanced menus, um, which um, 
uh, never used to be there so much before. And then I think once, um, you know, you are doing well in, um, you know, um, giving them or making a good menu as per the needs, you know, depending on the age group and so on, um, what I've had, what I've seen more is where they then might call you for like a consultation for one of their residents, right? So what I'm saying is I'm seeing that prospect change more and more where uh, before, like say 15 years back, they might just have um, anybody working in that group home, just write a menu. What's the big deal? We can just write a menu, uh, you know, kind of. <laughs> so that I definitely see. Uh, <clears throat> I do see, uh, you know, uh, it's all electric, uh, uh, it's all EMRs now. So all it's all medical uh, records. So I think as a consultant, um, there is actually even more flexibility now, uh, meaning, um, uh, you know, if it was all paper, I might have had to go into the buildings, say, during COVID times. Um, now, because I have access to all these buildings, um, I just work from home and I absolutely really, really enjoy it. Um, I do, you know, I will peek in once in a while or whatever as is needed by the home. Uh, but it's not like, you know, I am required to go in there because I could still do my menus sitting at home, I could still do my charting. Um, as a, uh, Again, as a consultant, I'm seeing my high risk patients or residents. Um, I always do have a certified dietary manager or I might have an RD, you know, like an L um, entry level RD who works in there uh, full time. And so they have like an ongoing list of like um, high risk residents that I need to see for them. Uh, so yeah, so these I think are some of um, the things I'm trying to think that have, you know, changed or, or um, I think um, have actually uh, worked out more for consultants, especially in like the assisted living um, environment group homes, I am seeing uh, more people ask for dietitians. Oh. And that is absolutely wonderful, um, I think, uh, for people who are aspiring to be um, consultants in uh, uh, these group home settings. So mm -hmm. how did you, so that's, uh, I think, valuable um, information. So thanks for sharing kind of getting back to this um kind of running your own you know business how did you approach contracts and getting those written and then you know what to go what goes in there and then pricing and all of that element did how did you know what to do and what perhaps did you learn along the way either through done well or little mistakes that you may be not necessarily mistakes, but just, you know, learning opportunities. No, right, right, Megan. Uh, you know, you can, I think I, I call them mistakes uh, uh, or uh, little errors or uh, little humps on the pathways as I went through. Um, the contract that I have now in place is a well-designed contract, which I didn't have 15 years back, right? Um, so I started, when I started with my first home, I'll be honest with you, it was choppy. Uh, I mean, it might have had some of the legal writings and things done, uh, but it wasn't the best professional looking contract. But as I, you know, over the years, I learned, and um, I think it was um, also the many different homes, even uh, say in nursing homes, you know, each home happens to be a little different from the other. It, how they operate, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, in my journey of consulting with all these different homes, I think I picked up bits and pieces and put everything together uh, where, um, like I said, you know, now I have a contractor, I have my whole bundle of forms, I call it, whenever there's like a new home, if I need to go in, then I would go in um, with those forms in place. And mm -hmm. I am telling Another thing, Megan, I realized is um, when you have everything, like that whole, uh, you have a contract, you have all these uh, different forms, whether it be a simple form, like a food preference form, to, you know, how am I going to track my weights, to every single form, what happens is the administrator, 
you know, or the corporate group feels very confident in you and who you are, because then they are not having to um, do anything. You, you're coming ready with your whole package, if that makes sense. Yeah, and do you find um, when the administrators, you know, perhaps reach out to you or you engage with a, a group home that maybe is interested in menus, do you kind of assess what they need and propose a set of services that you think are a good fit for them? How does that business negotiation, I think we as dietitians are like, well, that's that other stuff, but that's the really, the part you're like, tell me more, right? How do you go about as the expert and the professional saying, okay, here's, you know, here's what I offer. Here's what I recommend based on your facility. Do you manage those conversations? And, and what's that like? Great question. Love that. Absolutely. I do. Um, so um, at this stage, uh, especially, uh, in fact, for the last few years, um, if I'm being honest with you, I would not take in any or every home that approaches me. Similarly, you know, I, I'm not expecting every home to like. So uh, anytime we're doing a business deal, I would like to go in and take a tour of the home to see what that home looks like. What are the services that I could really offer? How could I um, say improve their dietary department um, completely? So um, whenever, um, say, I get a letter or, you know, somebody calls me, um, I would say I would set up an appointment um, to say, um, you know, I would love to come in and meet with, say, the administrator, the DON, and take a tour of the facility. Um, when I am touring now of the, you know, and uh, looking at the kitchen, um, and then I'll meet with, um, say, the dietary manager or the cook, um, I make an assessment, Megan, of what the needs are. Uh, because uh, needs could be very different. So, say, a group home that only has... Um, say 20, 25 residents versus a much bigger home will have differences, right? So then I'm going to take a tour um, and then I let them know, I'm like, I am going to send you um, a written um, uh, email with all the information that I think um, I could add uh, to uh, add the quality, add to quality of your dietary services, for example. Mm -hmm. And then I send in everything that I am able to do. Um, and then, you know, and that's how we kind of negotiate and talk um, and come up with a plan of, um, you know, what exactly is needed. Um, what, and you're very right. I, so right now, like I said, I've got, um, I'm trying to count in my head, like six to seven homes, right? And every home, every single home is different from the other. So mm -hmm. everybody has their unique needs. So uh, one would not be the same as the other. So um, it is um, just like if I can say with, say, our one-on-one uh, -on -one consults in a private setting, um, you know how mm -hmm. one person would never be the same as the second person you get. Similarly, even if it's a nursing home, you kind of have a broad outline, but everyone is going to be a little different from the other. Um, and, and I think I enjoy the differences, actually. I will be very honest with you. Um, it can be a little challenging because then you're like, um, oh, for this home, now I have to do this. But um, it adds variety to your day you're doing something different you're learning something different so um for all those young aspiring dietitians out there i'm going to say um if you are like me if you love variety if you like those challenges if you like to go into different settings go for it this is your field yeah you mentioned something a while back about um, seeing the high-risk patients and there might be a dietitian at the facility. Can you um, provide a little bit more information? That dietitian would be an employee of the, you know, long-term care facility and you're kind of the, the backstop, you know, they're hiring you to make sure that everything's done correctly. Is that, how does that interaction work when there's dietitians who maybe don't work for you, but they're them properly referring and otherwise what's that like um so like um currently i have a home where i have a dietitian who does clinical 
uh, it's, it's a big uh, nursing home. And then I have a dietary manager who takes care of the food service bed. And I am their consultant. So what when I am going in there um, or, you know, doing it even online a couple of times a month, what I am doing is I might review some of the things they're doing. Uh, for example, uh, you know, um, the dietary manager might run a kitchen sanitation check every uh -huh. week. I would do uh, one once a month. But it's um, somebody with more experience. It's a different set of eyes looking in. Similarly, if uh, say I have a dietitian who is doing the clinical, who's seeing um, all the new admits, the readmits. So uh, she's seeing all the new admits. Now, among the new admits, she spots somebody who is a high risk. Say, um, you know, we have a resident that came in with multiple wounds or, you know, uh, tube feeding, uh, multiple things going on. Immediately, she makes a referral to me. And then I um, see her, uh, her or him, because I think it would be too much for her then to, um, uh, too much on her plate to you know, because she has to see every resident that's basically walking in the building. So. Got it. Okay. That's helpful. So um, for those of you who are kind of, you know, listening in here, feel free to, you know, if you have specific questions about some of the areas that we've touched on, feel free to, you know, drop those in because I think sitting with someone who has, you know, this type of, you know, background, it's hard to take everything you've learned over a, you know, a 20 year period and dice it up in a short conversation. But you've hinted at the fact that you've created a lot of, you know, resources throughout, you know, as needed, right? So whether it's a food preferences form or probably the way you present the menu that, you know, yeah. that you're creating for a group home. What have you created i think that you're like most proud of or that you feel like made your work tremendously easier if you could give you know a few you know a couple of examples that people might not you know might not think about um so one of the things which is actually even posted in your rd to rd site <laughs> are my ebooks uh, which are um i did like um fall winter um uh, e-menu book, which uh, and uh, summer spring ones. I've got two e-books in there uh, posted, which basically, Megan, are like four week menus for group homes. These are standardized menus with recipes, with the groceries, with the nutrient analysis, all of that done. And I will tell you why I love it, because every group home I walk into will ask me, um, to you, will you be making a menu for us? And I will tell you, as dietitians, we all know <laughs> making menus <sighs> takes a lot of time, a lot of time, especially when you're trying to, you know, do the whole thing, not only do the menus, the grocery list. So um, in these books, I've put in like everything. So um, if a dietitian, you know, again, if a home wanted it, they could just go like, hey, I have this book right here with me and it's got everything. Um, so uh, that was one of my biggest uh, challenges or how do I say, you know, every time, every time that was the same question they would ask me. So I'm like, why don't I, uh, with all my years of experience, um, you know, I, I kind of know what they're looking for right. in terms of the things. Of course, there are specifics, but um, I'm like, let me just create these. Um, and so um, I did. And um, I think if I can say so, I think I'm proud of what I created. I just, it was something, it was my way of giving to the community um, of, you know, dietitians, because um, um, that's how I think we grow by giving to each other. So, um, yeah. That. So we have some nice meaty questions coming in. So, and they're the kind of things that, you know, of course I would want to, to ask as well. So there's a couple of them around, you know, writing proposals. Like, do you ever go out and, you know, write a proposal? You talked a little bit about this, but when you need to generate new business and what is that like? And how long are your average contracts? How do you decide on pricing? Do you go, well, there's going to be, 
X number of hours. How does that part work? So, so I do a market analysis, right? So I am, so I'm based out of say Michigan. I am going to see what the pay rate is for, um, dietitians who are say employees now em as an employee you get all your benefits which remember as a consultant you get like no benefit nothing um so what no you know in fact you don't even get taxed so everything you know you need to work out your taxes from there so um i would keep that percentage in mind and add to what a regular employee is making with of course you know your years of experience and your expertise and uh, how much and i will tell you this uh, uh, don't uh, be afraid um, if the home again if they are very happy with your quality of work with what you do um, they if there are homes that really really um, again respect or love you for what you do and they will pay you so I would not compromise on that um, and it's hard for me to throw a number again because you know every state is different um, every area you're from within the state is going to be different so do a market analysis and every um, state or if any place you live in is going to have consultants right they're going to have some private consultants um they're going to have consultants who might just um do corporate wellness i'm just saying different things so look in to what they are charging and uh you know make sure that you are um at par or you're comparable to where they are at uh with that um and yes as far as you're saying writing the contract may take time or every time um, i have my basic contract like i said i really like what's in there now but i do tweak it depending on the home i'm at um and again i would sit and talk with like the administrator human resource person and see do we want um to do a contract say for like a year for a year and then i've got that or you know how are we going are we going month to month um things like that um in fact that reminds me one time i went into a home that um had failed the survey and so um you know they wanted me to go and help them out so that contract was much shorter right because i was just trying to help them so it would de depend on what the situation is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That actually brings up a good point about getting that expertise in, you know, regulatory and the state guidelines. How did you develop that expertise? And do you have any recommendations for getting that those skills besides just working, you know, as a dietitian, some of that's going to, I mean, I, had a background as a clinical manager and I got way too familiar with like CMS, you know, regulations and department. I didn't want to be that familiar, but you do over time. But how do you, besides just like down, like reading them online, how did you get that expertise? Uh, I think just uh, walking through as many surveys as I have. Um, <laughs> uh, and even though I'm a consultant, I do make it very clear to the home. See, that's another thing uh, uh, where you're talking about the quality of work you're doing. So I make it very clear to the administrators, to the DONs, even though I'm a consultant, give me a call when state walks in. I mm -hmm. would like to know. I like to be in there if possible. And I typically try to show up there, even if you know there is no issues why because then number one i can walk through the survey with them gives my dietary managers gives us a home a very good impression that you're very that you are invested in them um and through those surveys i think i have learned to spot uh, many of the regulations like you're saying every home will have a regulation book right megan that you read and you know all these rules and things like that but um there's nothing like the hands-on experience uh -huh. So the individual surveyor's application of a kind of long and complex standard, you're like, oh, because then you're aware for the next time of how it's applied and interpreted in mm -hmm. very unique uh, individual situations. You're like, oh, right. <laughs> the surveyors, remember one thing, you're the expert. You're right. the expert. So, mm. uh, you know, what we know as dietitians and why did I say something about a high risk person that I did? 
So right. just yeah. Then. yeah. And the policies and procedures and all that good stuff. So um, I think people do have questions about obviously, you know, what to charge. And I think a lot of, you know, what I hear you saying is some of it is going to depend on, you know, the market as well as the individual facility. And that ultimately it's going to perhaps take some time as well. So, you know, of looking at what people are making a percentage of obviously for that benefits and taxes and that you've said, don't be afraid to, you know, charge the facility, especially if maybe you've already, you know, maybe have a relationship or they, you know, you don't want to sell yourself short, I guess. So I know we can't maybe say charge this amount. I think sometimes we want to hear that, but that um, you're probably going to have to do some of that work um, or maybe engage and network with other dietitians in the area and try to find one right. who might be open to, to meeting with you as a colleague. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have, um, students, interns follow me um, so they can see what I'm doing as a consultant. And I think that's very cool. If somebody's really um, uh, looking into this field, I would highly recommend doing that. Um, and again, market analysis of what, uh, you know, where you are um, and what the pay scale is there. And that's how you figure out uh, what you want to uh, charge the building. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I really appreciated that, you know, we've kind of had this time to to dive into this topic. We have a few minutes left in that, you know, admitting my own guilt in the idea that long term care is long hours, tons of burnout, low pay, that there's a certain, well, you know, I work in acute care or I'm in private practice, that the reality is that there's a ton of flexibility, the opportunity to build a very, you know, successful financially business through doing and really looking at the types of work that you enjoy, whether that's more of the menus or the, you know, you know, high risk patients that you as the consultant get to really, as you grow your business, decide to pick and choose more of the kind of um, work that you find interesting. And if you're like me, you like to do a lot of different things. And you, you said that eight to five, like patient after patient after patient that, you know, that sometimes our perception and reality about what working at in certain areas is like, that we should challenge those perceptions. I'm glad I had you on to talk about this. So how can people find more about you or get in touch with you if they would like to and any resources that you might have? Absolutely. Um, so I have my own website. It's www. <laughs> Um And uh, uh, so again, it's www.dietitianmoshumi.com. And I am on Facebook as uh, and Instagram and LinkedIn uh, um, as Dietitian Moshumi or, you know, uh, Moshumi Mukherjee um, uh, on uh, LinkedIn. Um, so absolutely feel free to connect. I'm all about encouraging, helping um, anybody in the field. I'm very passionate. I love what I do. Um, and like I said, you know, I do a variety of things and I absolutely love it, um, enjoy it. A lot of my products are actually in uh, <laughs> RD2, RD2. So if you're wanting um, any of um, the long term uh, forms and things like that, I am planning to post those too um, nice. at RD2. And um, thank you to you, oh. Megan. RD to RD. This is one platform um, I so enjoy. I always recommend all my young RDs, uh, students, uh, volunteers to look into this because this is just phenomenal uh, what you provide to us as dietitians. Uh, so, well, this is my favorite day of the month when I get to um, engage and, and really learn from another expert in the field. So there was um, one gosh, final question here. Shani was asking about how do you clarify your role as a consultant to the nutrition staff already employed in the facility? So, you know, you being in that consultant role versus how do you how do you handle that? Great question. Um, I have a sheet or a form for that, too, that I then provide to them, you know, what are my responsibilities? So it says consultant responsibilities, which 
I uh, put down, uh, you know, made myself with over so many years of experience. But that's a great question because it is a fine line, uh, especially say you have another dietitian, a CDM, you know, there's many different people in there. So what is your position as a consultant? Um, I definitely have that form also in the bundle. So it's all uh, it's all very clear um, as to what exactly my role is and what I'm going to do um, when I'm there. So. Well, terrific. So I do have a um, blog post planned coming out on, you know, some topics around long-term care, long-term care resources. So you can bet I'm going to be beating Moshumi's door down trying to get that resource up in RD to RD. So there's a link to her um, store in the, the details of this video on Facebook. But if you're on our email list, um, you know, as that blog comes out, you'll be sure to know about it. Thank you so much for being on today. And um, this was a really fun topic for me to learn more about. And I'm grateful that you were here. Thank you, Megan. Thanks again. It was yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Take care. Okay. Bye.